Welcome everyone to our Salesforce Apex Programming Webinar. My name is Shelly Sharma and I'm a Customer Success Manager at SP Tech. A brief introduction about our company. SP Tech is a Salesforce consulting service based in Atlanta, Georgia, USA. We are listed as a top 10 consulting service on our Salesforce App Exchange. You can follow us on LinkedIn and subscribe to our YouTube channel to get the latest and update. And we are excited to host this webinar on our Salesforce Apex programming. Let's get started. I would like to invite our speaker and coach, Mr. Sanjay Gupta. He has a 16 plus years of experience in education, Salesforce consulting and training industry. So here you go, Sanjay. Thank you, Shelly. So welcome everyone uh, in this session. So. Uh, as you can see on the screen, uh, today we will be discussing about Apex programming. So uh, these will be like a sequence of sessions because Apex is a uh, Apex programming is a big topic, and uh, in one hour session we cannot learn each and every aspect of uh, Apex programming. And in our previous session we discussed about Flow. So. Uh, Flow is basically a low code development tool where we don't need to write any line of code and still we can implement lots of automation. But prior to Flow, Apex was there. It is still uh, there. And uh, if you want to implement <laughs> complex solutions, then we always need Apex. So uh, Apex programming, basically <laughs> you need to learn if you want to become a developer. And if you are not working as a developer, or maybe if you're working as a BA, QA, or architect, or project manager, then also you need to know like what actually we do through Apex programming and uh, uh, which tools are dependent on Apex programming. So you might have heard about Trigger, you might have heard about integration, you might have heard about Aura and LWC. So they basically are incomplete without Apex. Right, so if you have Apex, then only those two will be working. So that's why it is still available, even if Flow is uh, available to build uh, automation without code. Okay. So, and here you can see this is the name of my channel. So if you want to learn uh, lots of scenarios, so I have uploaded uh, more than 300 videos on different topics of Salesforce. So you can just learn from there as well. Uh, this is about me, so <coughs> I'm uh, like uh, doing my own, uh, uh, like working with my own organization as well as working with one uh, consulting firm. And uh, I'm ex Salesforce employee and having 16 plus years of experience, which is mixed of education and IT industry. And I help people to learn Salesforce uh, in easy way so that they can also build their career. I, and if they are also working in Salesforce ecosystem, and if you want to switch to development uh, role, so I just guide them like how uh, they can transit their role. Okay, so now coming on to the Apex programming. <coughs> Sorry. So basically, you need to uh, learn few things what we can do through Apex and uh, what type of programming language it is. So you all might have heard about Java. And Java is basically object oriented programming language. So Apex is more uh, similar to Java. Those who know little bit Java, they can easily uh, catch Apex syntax. And uh, whatever features are available in Java, almost all the features are available with Apex. And uh, additionally, some more features are uh, some more features are also available with Apex programming. Like through Apex, you can interact with uh, database as well. That feature is not available with uh, Java in easy way. We need to do lots of configuration for that. Then it is strongly typed, so validates reference to object set compilation time. So whenever you write code and something is not uh, appropriately written, <laughs> so that is being checked at compilation time automatically. Right, so Salesforce is having their own IDE. IDE is basically integrated development environment where we can write codes. So if you write any code and if you uh, write any object or field reference incorrectly, so that is checked automatically. 
and if you don't correct it, you won't be able to save your code. OK, then integrated with the database, so uh, it provides direct access to records and their fields. So with the help of SOQL, so you might have heard about SQL or you can say SQL, but in Salesforce we have SOQL. It means Salesforce Object Query Language. So through Apex, you can interact with your objects and you can just fetch data. You can update data, you can insert data. So those operations you can perform. And uh, it enabled developers to add business logic to system events, including button click, related record update, and Visual Force pages. So this I already told you, uh, like whatever operation you want to do uh, with particular feature or tool uh, of Salesforce, you can connect Apex programming in the backend. And uh, one can call Apex code through web service request and trigger on objects. So these are some <laughs> features of Apex programming. Then Apex is included in these additions. So generally for practice purpose, we use developer edition, but if you have other editions as well, so uh, you will be having Apex uh, feature there. You can write codes. Then these are the requirements like when to use Apex. So if you want to create web and email service, you can write Apex code, perform complex validation on one or more than one objects. Then you can create complex business logics. Those cannot be implemented by workflow rules, process builders or flow, right? Then you can create custom logic that occurs over the entire transaction. Then attach custom logic to another operation such as save a record so that it occurs whenever the operation is executed regardless it originates sorry regardless it originates in ui vf vf means visual force ui means user interface or from soap api means integration okay so from ui if you are clicking on a button and if you want to perform certain operations so you can have apex in the backend if you are writing visual force page so in the back end, you will have uh, Apex. Uh, if you are integrating Salesforce with other um, entities, then also you need to write Apex. If you are writing Lightning Web Component, then also if you want to interact with your data, you will be writing Apex. <clears throat> then these are some uh, technical features. Those are supported by Salesforce. Sorry, those are supported by Apex. So you need to build classes. Then we have uh, interfaces as well predefined interfaces that we can just use directly collections <coughs> so we have three collections list set and map so if you have large amount of data and if you want to process so these collections we will be using then we create objects arrays expressions variables and constants we apply conditions through if else we apply loops then uh, it is uh, stored like it is on cloud. So whenever you write some code you save, so it will be available on cloud with your org. You can access that from anywhere and uh, compiled automatically. Uh, you will see all the errors uh, whenever you write something wrong and executed in the cloud as well. So it means you don't need to install any additional software to write and compile and run your Apex code. Then we have triggers to call methods. If you want to call Apex method, so you can use triggers. You can use database statement to query and search data. Transactions and rollbacks. So if some transaction is failing, so whole operations will be rolled back. Nothing will be affecting your actual data if something is breaking. Then we have global access modifier. So uh, we have uh, private, public, and global access modifiers. So it depends like in which namespace or application you want to access your Apex class, right? So if you want to access your Apex in uh, different, different applications, so you will be creating it as global. Otherwise, you can use private or third one is public. Sorry, third one is, so second is public and third one is private. And uh, versioning of custom code, so it is done automatically. So uh, Salesforce maintain versions of Apex. So every year they modify the version of Apex, so it is controlled automatically. If you have old version of Apex, then you can convert that Apex class into a new version. So we have steps for that. 
but it is done automatically. Now these are development tools. Uh, you can use developer console. Uh, another we have Visual Studio Code where also you can write code, but Visual Studio Code you need to install. Then you need to link or uh, you need to connect your org with uh, a Visual Studio org. Uh, so I think developer console is the easiest way. And if I take you to the org, so from this gear icon, if you click. So here you will find this option developer console. If you open it. So you will see the interface where. Uh, we will be implementing the code, so this is our developer console. If you click on file new, so here you can write Apex class. OK, so right now I'm going to give you a small demo. Before that, let's see like what all data types are supported. So whenever we do any programming. So in programming languages, we uh, just need uh, variables where we can store data and those variables uh, should be having particular data type. So you can consider them uh, similar to field. If we create a field under object, so we need to specify a type like that field will be storing which type of value. So similarly in Apex programming, if you want to store some value, so you need to specify a particular type. So here you can see uh, in previous slide we have primitive as object collection. These three are popular. So first is primitive. Primitive means uh, these are predefined uh, data types. And you can store single value in these variables. So Boolean, integer, decimal, string, ID, these are data types. Is active, num, price, s, id, these are variables. And true, zero, thousand, hello world, and this long text, this is a constant value that we are storing. Okay. So now let's see how we can do it in uh, developer console. So we have two ways to execute the code. First, you can create a class and you can use that. Second, if you want to implement your code without implementing a class. So here if you go to debug, we have a we have an option open execute anonymous window. So here you can write your code. So I am zooming in so you can see enter Apex code. So here you just need to directly write your Apex code and it will start execution. So let's say I'm creating integer num1 equals to 10, num2 equals to 20, and uh, sum. These three variables are declared. Now I am writing sum equals to num1 plus num2. So this way we are doing calculation. So these values I provided. Then I'm adding and result will be stored in some variable. Then you can write system dot debug. Now, if you want to show something as is that will be enclosed in single quotes. And the variable which will be holding the value that you need to write directly without any single quotes. And for separation, you will be using this plus sign. Right, so this sum equals to will display as is. And this sum will be displaying 30. And we are using system dot debug here, which will show the result. So these three lines of code we implemented. Uh, this is Apex code. Now, if you want to run and see the result, so we have this option open log. So uh, this debug will be showing the result in the logs. So we need to open it. And uh, here we have two button execute and execute highlighted. If you click on execute, so all three lines will run. If you click on execute highlighted and if you have highlighted two lines, so only those two lines will run. So I am going to run uh, all three lines, so just clicking on execute. So here you can see logs are opened automatically, so this is execution log. And uh, if you see here, we have a checkbox which is debug only. If I click on this, so I will see that result. You can see line number three is showing debug result sum equals to 30. So the sum equals to which I mentioned in single quotes, it is uh, showing as is and uh, 30 is showing through the variable. OK. Now I'm closing it now. Uh, 
anonymous window is gone. If you want to open it again, click and click on this option. Shortcut is Control plus E. So this way your code will be available and it stores the last executed codes as well. So this is the one way to run your Apex code. Now, another way is to create Apex class like this code won't be stored permanently. It is for temporary testing purpose. Now, if you want to create a file, Apex file, and there if you want to store your uh, code. So what you can do, just copy it. And uh, you just need to go to top, file, new, and Apex class. Here you need to write name of the Apex class. Demo Apex 1. OK. So a new class is created. Here you can see public class demo Apex 1. Now, inside this class, you need to create methods. This way I'm writing the method. So public means this method will be accessible outside the class. So basically class is a container. In a class, you can have different, different methods so that you can process uh, some data. Right, so if you want to process some data, so for that purpose, uh, you, you will be implementing a class and inside that class, you will be having a method. If you want to have another method, you can copy and you can paste it like this. So we can have two methods. <laughs> Let's say we rename this sum. Here we are writing subtraction. So this way we can have two different methods. And here I'm going to write that code. So I'm copying it, pasting it here. OK, I am pasting it here as well. So here addition is done. Here I am doing subtraction and showing subtraction, changing this variable as well. So this way I have two processes. One is this method sum and one is this subtraction. Right? Now here I use this word as static. Uh, if you use static, so what you need to do, I think video stopped. Okay, so what you need to do, you just need to call these methods. Now these, this class is implemented, I'm just uh, saving it. So you can see this class is saved. Now, if, if I close this file, if I close this file, then also if I open, and select particular class. So here lots of classes are available. Let me search it. Open resources and here I'm going to search demo Apex one and if I open it, so I will be able to see the code. So this way, if you want to save your Apex class permanently, Apex code permanently, so you just need to create Apex class and through that you can do. <clears throat> Now, how to call these methods? So you need to write name of class, then dot sum, then demo apex. So let's first execute this. So I'm just selecting this line because I just need to run this uh, line of code. So I'm clicking on execute highlighted now. So logs will be opened and uh, I'm going to click on debug only. And here you can see sum equals to 30 is available and it is because of line number six. And line number six is this. It is counting it. OK, this is the line number six, not this one. This is line number six, which is showing the result. Now, if you want to perform both operations together, So these two statements I selected again. I'm clicking on execute highlighted. And if I click on debug only. So you can see two results are available. One because of line six, one because of line 12, sum and subtraction. So here you can see 
line 6 is showing sum line 12 is showing subtraction so this way you will be implementing your apex class now we have other data types boolean decimal string id so it depends on your requirement which type you will be using okay now next we have s object so whatever object we have created either it is uh, standard or it is custom so those objects also we can use to uh, create variables so here this account will be known as data type and acc is a variable then my obj underscore underscore c is the data type and obj will be the variable and this is the way you will be filling the data Okay, so let me give you one demo for this as well. So you can write public static void account OBJ. So here I'm writing account ACC equals to new account. So this way you will be creating a variable of account. Then you can write ACC dot name equals to test ACC dot phone equals to one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So this way in this ACC variable, uh, account name and phone will be stored. Now, if you want to push this data into org, you want a new account record should be created and uh, will be having name and phone populated. So you can simply write insert ACC. So this insert is basically a DML statement. DML means data manipulation language. Okay, that we will be discussing uh, in detail later on. So this way I just created a variable of type S object and uh, filling some information and inserting. Right now, if I want to run this. So again, I need to call it. This way, so I'm just checking the name. It is account OBJ, right? Now I'm going to uh, run it. This time uh, in logs, no uh, debug masses will be available because I have not used system.debug for this method. This time I need to check the result in the org. So I'm unchecking it and clicking on execute highlighted. Okay, it is showing error. Void account object. Incorrect signature. OK. Let me just check the name. OK, I got the issue. I didn't save this file, so you can see. Here this asterisk is mentioned. It means this file is not saved yet. So I'm just saving it. And now it will work. So again, I'm <coughs> selecting this line and clicking on execute highlighted. So no log will open. Right? You need to go to home. Then go to accounts. So here you will see your data. Here it is test. And the phone number. If you want to see new this week, so only this record will be available. So this we created today. If you open this, go to details so you can check uh, created date and time. Right. So this way it is working. And same way you will be able to use custom object. But uh, make sure you use underscore underscore C with uh, this API name. Right. Next, we have collection. Like if you want to store data in bulk, so we just created integer variable and we created three variables num1, num2, and sum. Now, if you want to store 10 integer values together, so that cannot be done through single variable. For that, you need to convert your variable into a list. So let's list is an ordered collection of element. Each element of list has an index and the first elements index will be zero. List can be nested like you can have list of list. And it can be even multidimensional and uh, you can create list for any type. 
it can be primitive it can be collection it can be s object it can be user defined type or built in type so user defined type or built in type means apex classes so apex class is also considered as data type so here you can see if we are using this apex class so it will be treated as a data type right so th those are mentioned here as user defined type or built in type and this way we create list so list of string list of account list of integer list of account so this way you can create and you can add the data so let me give you a demo So here I'm going to create list of integer. And let's say marks equals to new list of integer. And now in this marks list, if you want to add some data, you can write it like this. Okay, so any number of values you can enter. And if you want to show the values, so you can write system dot debug list contains max. Okay, so we have this list demo. So now I'm going to uh, first time saving this. It is saved. Now I'm going to call it demo apex one dot list demo. This time result will be available in the logs, so I'm going to check this and clicking on execute highlighted. OK, so again, I need to click on debug only, so this way you will see the result. It is showing all three values. Right. So it is having 10, 20, 30. So these three values we added into that list. OK, now there are lots of methods available. So for that, uh, I'm going to show you. List. Class in Apex. So here it is. If you open it. So here you will find all the methods. So these are the methods that you can practice for this list. OK. So similar to list, we have another type. OK, one more thing that you need to uh, see, like uh, here we have created list of account. So whenever we fetch, data from objects. So we need to write SOQL, right? And uh, in those SOQL, what happens? Uh, data will be fetched and that data you can store into list. So whatever data we fetch through SOQL, that can be stored into list only. So let's see one example of that as well. So public static void list with s object so here i'm going to create list of account naming it as acc list new list of account right now acc list equals to so here i'm going to write soql salesforce object query language so we need to write select ID name from account limit five. So what will happen? Five account records will be queried and they will be stored into this ACC list. Now what you can write system dot debug list contains plus and then you can write ACC list. Let's see what happens now. So I'm going to run this method.
So this time logs will open and if I click on debug only. So here you can see the results. So it is showing first record uh, account ID and name, then account ID and name, third, fourth and fifth. Five records are fetched and it will be fetching random five records. So this way, whenever you query some data through S object, so this way it will be stored and you can process it. Right? Then these are some methods, like if you see, if you want to get some value, so if you pass index, so on that index, whatever value is available, it will be fetched. If you want to add some value on particular index, so 30 will be added on one index. If you want to clean the values of list, use clear. If you want to know the size of list, use size. If you want to check whether it is empty or not, so it will be returning true or false. And uh, true false we can store in this Boolean variable. Right, and uh, this I already demoed. Then we have set. So set is basically an ordered collection and it doesn't contain duplicate. Whereas list can contain duplicates. This is important. In list, we can have duplicate values, but in set, we cannot. Then set can contain collections that can be nested within one another. And uh, data types are same. Uh, these are the types for which we can create list as well as we can create set. And this is the way we create set. So set of string, set of ID, set of integer, and then few methods. So <clears throat> to add values, you can use add. To remove values, you can use remove. And contains, contains will check whether this value is available or not. And uh, we already know uh, set will be containing unique values. So um, like, so we can easily check whether that value is available or not. That this contains we cannot apply on list because in list we can have duplicates. Then we have size is empty, so these are same uh, as list. Okay, and for this also you can find a class. So here also you can search for set. So you will find this set class. If you open, so here you will find all the methods. Right, so if you click on any method, so it will take you to the example. Here code is available. You can just copy and test it in the developer console. Then we have map. So before map, like if you have any question, so you can just go ahead and ask. Anyone having any question uh, related to list set or uh, primitives that you want to ask, you can go ahead. Okay, if there is no question, so uh, we can see next collection that is map. So map is basically different with uh, list and set. So in list and set, we store one uh, value at one place. But in case of map, we can have a key value pair. So on one location, there will be two entities. One will be key and one will be value. And both can be, can, can be uh, like of different types. So keys are always unique, having a value associated, and values can be duplicate. It uses hash structure for all the maps. Uh, so we can uh, we can do random searching. Like if you pass key, so it will be uh, searching that key and uh, basis on that key, whatever value is associated, that will be fetched automatically. Then adding a map entry with an existing key overrides existing entry with new. So if there is any key already available, if you uh, put that key again, so its previous value will be overridden with the new one. Map key and values can contain any collection and can contain nested collections. So they can be of any type. 
it can be of type collection as well and uh, <coughs> key and values can be of any data type so this is the example like if you want to create a map of string comma string so first string will be key and second string will also be like uh, value both are having same type in second example we have uh, keys of type integer and uh, values are of type uh, string so different types and here you can see the example we are using put so in uh, list and set we use add but in case of map we use put so one two these are keys and first second these are values then here we are using contains key so if you pass one so it is checking whether this key is available in the map or not if it is available it will return true otherwise false <laughs> then we have get so get is basically returning the value which is associated with this key and uh, key set will be returning all the keys which are available in the map right so let's see how they will be working so i am going to create a method now So I am going to create a map of integer comma string. Then I'm going to use this name and then put. So this way I am adding the values. Now if I want to display the values, so I'm writing system dot debug map contains. So I'm just uh, showing all the map values together in first go. <coughs> then I will be adding more statements so you will understand the difference. So I'm just saving it and I'm going to run it. So I just need to run this line. So I'm selecting it and uh, clicking on execute highlighted. So logs will be opened. So I'm just clicking on debug only. So here you can see the values. Map contains one equals to red, two equals to blue, three equals to green. So one, two, three, these are keys. And red, blue, green, these are values. OK, I can see some questions. So if we try to add duplicate data and set, what will happen? Uh, so uh, if you try to add values, uh, duplicate values in set, so nothing will happen. Like you won't see anything. No error will be there. So basically it will replace old with new, but both are same, so you won't see any change. OK, so. Now I'm going to modify this. OK, so map. Keys. Map <laughs> value, so I'm going to show keys and values separately. So if you want to have keys, so you can write key set. And if you want to have values, so you can write values. So these are the methods. Again, I'm uh, running this method. So this time you will see, OK, I didn't save it. So this is important. I always forget this. So I'm just saving this code. It is showing some error. So this way you can see if there is any error. So this way, this red mark will be available. So map values. OK, here I need to write values. Not value. So this time if I run this code, it will execute. Logs will be open and you will see <coughs> three results. So see it carefully. 
first is showing key value pair second is just showing keys and third is just showing values okay so this way you can use it and if you want to search particular values so that is also possible so for that you will be using contains key so i am writing if condition if then i just need to use this map dot contains key two then i'm writing system dot debug going available then else <laughs> so what is happening here uh, we are having this block so here uh, i'm just checking um, contains key so if i'm passing two if that key is available in that map so this if will be true and this is true block so this is basically true block and this is false block <laughs> so if key is available accordingly result will be available if it is not available then not available will be displayed so i'm just running it again and uh, clicking on this option so you can see it is showing available and these are line numbers uh, wherever your debug statement is available system dot debug so this way you will be able to use map and again here you will find map reference so search for map you will see map class and here you will find everything related to map so all the methods are available if you like contains key which i demoed so here it is so this way you will see the examples and uh, you can just try and understand okay and uh, you can use uh, s objects as well in the map so in the first example you can see id is the key and account uh, s object is the value so we can store records as well so here you can see we created a list and that list we are passing into map so this is map of id comma account then name of the map and it is uh, having that list so that list will be converted into map automatically okay and here we are using map of account comma list of contact so key is account and the value is a list so this is also possible so this is little bit complex but uh, we can do we can create our map in this way right now we can apply loops as well on list set map whatever we created okay so how we can do that so here we have this list so if you want to apply a loop so you can write for okay before that you need to check it for null so if acc list dot size is greater than zero so we are just checking this list if its size is greater than zero then only it will go inside and uh, here we are having a loop so this way you uh, you will be iterating it so acc list will be containing lots of records in this case five records at max <laughs> so one by one each record will go to acc variable right so this is a loop it is uh, known as for each loop so here we need to pass the list and uh, list will be iterated automatically and whenever a list will be empty so it will break automatically now here you can write system dot debug account details and here you can write acc if you want to show account name account id individually so you can write acc.id acc.name so that way also it will work 
<laughs> so this statement line number 46 will show all the data in single line but it will show data line by line and if you want to apply some logic here so you can do so right now i just need to run this list demo no list with s object so i'm selecting it and going to run it So see the difference. Line number 42 is showing five times. <laughs> because this line number 42 is written inside the loop. See the line number 42. It is part of loop. That's why it is repeating five times. And it is showing different IDs, different names. And here 46 is showing all accounts together. So now what is the use of this loop? Like if you want to process some information one by one, then this way you can implement the loop. So same way you can apply a loop on a set, you can apply a loop on map as well. So if you apply a loop on map, so first if, check the size of map, Now here you can apply a for loop. So you need to decide uh, on which you will be iterating on keys or on values. If it is keys, so here you need to write integer. If it is values, you need to write string. So let's uh, iterate it on key. So you will be writing integer i colon and then name of map dot key set. So whole keys will be fetched. And one by one, they will go to I. And through system.debug, you can show map keys. So the output will be in different lines. So here you can see line number 66. Here it is. So here you can see 66 is repeating three times and it is just showing keys. So this way, if you want to iterate on values, so that is also possible. So just copy. Paste it and here instead of key set, you can write values. And here we need to write string. Change the variable name to str, then map values, and here you can write str. So this way we are iterating on values. So data type is important. Basis on that, you can just run it. See the results. Here keys are together, values are together. Here keys are separate, values are separate in different lines through loops. Right? So this way you can iterate loop on list, SOQL, set, or map. We can use SOQL in loop as well. So one more example we can do. So here what we are doing. After this query, we are applying this condition and then we are running it. So I'm just making it comment. And uh, what you can do, you can write loop like this. So in the first line of loop, you can write SOQL. And if nothing is returned, so it will be checking null automatically. So this way you can shrink your code. So instead of lining this, you can write this, both are same. And always remember, we never write uh, SOQL and DML statement inside loop. 
So this is not inside. It is in the first line, which is fetching uh, five records. One by one, they will go to ACC and internally those will be processed. So this SOQL will work one time. It won't be uh, like executing five times. That's why it is correct. OK, so. So this is all about uh, like uh, in the this is first session of APEX. So uh, this is all what I planned. So if you have uh, questions now, you can ask. So more things we will be discussing in upcoming session. Right, and uh, one thing. Uh, like I want to say, uh, if, if you do practice like I showed you. Uh, different uh, classes where different methods are available. So if you go through, then in the next session, you will be uh, having some uh, fruitful knowledge so that we can uh, we can relate things. If you do hands on, then uh, you will be able to understand the things well. OK, and. Uh, one more thing I want to show, like if you want to practice scenarios. So you can just visit uh, my website as well, where uh, I just uh, placed all the YouTube videos in proper order. So if you want to learn Apex, so here Apex option is available. So you will see all the recordings along with scenarios. So this way you will be able to practice the things. Right, so this is all about uh, today's session. Thank you. If you uh, don't have any questions, so over to you, Shelly. Thank you, everyone, for joining, and thank you, Sanjay, for conducting this awesome and very informative webinar. And please do follow us on LinkedIn and subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest update. And goodbye for now. Thank you.